Right, so hello again everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Me Cool KM2 Android TV box. We're going to do what we usually do, do a few tests on it, see how it performs and is it worth the money. And one more thing as well is this video was uploaded onto my other channel, but a lot of you were saying I'd rather you keep the device reviews on this channel. So I've simply just moved it across from there to here. Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's crack on. Right, so first of all, I want to thank MeCool for sending this device out to review. And if you own a MeCool device, let me know in the comments section down below what your experience has been like with them. And if you don't own a MeCool device, let me know your thoughts on the KM2. So yeah, it came in a box, but what's inside the box? Inside, we've got the MeCool KM2, we've got the controller, and then we've also got the plug and the HDMI cable. But taking a look at the box, I think it looks quite nice. I don't know if it's because I had it on a white desk, but it looks pretty slick and it feels well made as well. If you take a look on the front of the box, we've got like a three light LED display. On the right hand side of the box, we've got a USB 2.0, a 3.0 and a micro SD card slot. On the back, we've got the infrared, we've got the optical, we've got AV, HDMI, Ethernet port, power port, and then a dedicated power button. And then on the left of the box, there's nothing. Another thing I want to look at as well is the remote, because I like it. Compare it to such as the Chromecast, I think it's much, much better. Feels better to hold, and then you've got your dedicated YouTube, Netflix buttons, volume up and down, mute, home button. You can also see there's a dedicated live TV button. I don't actually know what this does yet. I've been trying to press it and nothing happens. Maybe I need to install an official live TV app for it to work, or I need to remap the button to open up an app of my choice. Don't know what I did then. <laughs> so there's a lot going off on there, but if I compare it to the likes of the Chromecast, I much more prefer this one. So now let's start it up see how it performs with different apps, see if it's worth the money, and then I'll tell you my personal opinion as well. Right, so when first plugging in the box, it obviously takes you through all the setup process, signing into a Google account if you want to. But yeah, very similar look to Google TV. You've got your apps along the top there. Obviously now I've installed quite a few apps. On the home screen, we can go down. And then if you see things that you don't want on there, you can go right to the bottom, choose channels. And then there's one for promotional there. If I turn that off, it'll get rid of that bar. You can actually turn them all off if you want. But as you can see now, that list is smaller. To move them up and down, we can go to the left, click on that. And then you can move that tab up and down. And then to customize how your home screen looks, we can long hold on an application. We can move it. We can put it where we want where we run <laughs> you can long hold it again and remove it from the favorite so you can add more by clicking on the plus click on that and it'll add it to that list and also what you can see on the app section is i have got netflix one thing me equals always struggle with is getting the official netflix on their devices so you was always installing a mobile version and the quality was like 480p it were awful but now if i click on netflix again you can see we are running the Android TV version. I can click on something to play it, give it a couple of moments, and that is playing in full quality. And then also at the top, we've got the settings, but like we said at the beginning of the video, we've got a dedicated settings button that we can just press, and then it'll take us straight into there. If we do go to device preferences and click on about, let me just move me across a bit. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So then we can come down and we can click on storage. One thing that's very similar to such as the Chromecast is now the internal storage. It's only got 4.5 gigabyte of total space. And if I click on that, I've installed quite a few things, including two games as well. There's still 2.4 gigabyte available. In my opinion, it's more than enough if you're using this device for streaming. But another huge positive this has got over the likes of the Fire Stick and the Chromecast is obviously we've got USB ports to be able to add external storage. And then if I go back into settings, you can see it's just the basic Android TV settings section. And then something else you can see is it's got Chromecast built in. Let me just get my phone out. So if I load up YouTube on my phone and I click on a video and then I click on cast and I'm going to cast it to the MeCool KM2, give it a couple of moments just to connect, still says connecting, 
It says free link to device, and then there you go, we're playing Ding Dangly Do. So already we can see that it's a pretty good device. So now I'm quickly going to test a couple of different things, see how it plays with 4K content, even try a little bit of Android gaming, and then I'll tell you the price and my opinion. So as we said now, Netflix in full quality, that's awesome. The likes of Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, everything like that should be supported as well. Quickly, just going to test Prime Video just to make sure. Play on that. And there you go, full quality once again. If you want to use Google Assistant as well, you just click on it, don't hold it. Play Store. Oh shit. Play Comic, don't hold it. Play Store. <laughs> Stop listening to everything, Google. Play Store. So as you can see, it's actually recognised what I was saying and it's took me straight into the Google Play Store. It's not a full Google Play Store you'd expect to see on an Android phone, but all the apps inside this store are supported on Android TV devices. I'm quickly just going to go into YouTube, see how it plays with 4K content. And as you can see, we've loaded up and it plays it smooth as you, you'd like. It plays it awesome. I'm going to click on that, I'm going to go to more, I'm going to click on the resolution, as you can see it is playing in 4K. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit to somewhere, I don't know where. I'm going to fast forward it to here, because my kids love this bit. A frog runs across the water, love it. You ready? <laughs> so as you can see, everything plays very smooth. It's very responsive when I'm navigating, but it is a new device. So we may see a change over time. I've, in, like I said, installed a couple of games. I've paired up an Xbox One controller. Not sure what Daytona Rush is. But like I said, on the Xbox One controller, don't know what game this is. But um, I found it pretty decent. You can, look, bump, gone. Oh, bump, gone. <laughs> Ta -da! As you can see, though, plays it really well. And now I'm going to try this Dead Trigger 2. Not my kind of game kind of shits me up when i play stuff like this but as you can see we're playing it what we're gonna do here boom boom tada good night vienna is what they say down in the south I think <laughs> like i said once again as you can see it's playing it brilliant no complaints whatsoever hey up mate finally because it's dragging on a little bit this third party apps yes you can install them you can download downloader we can go into the favorites and let's crack on dot org anything you can install so if you go through to the me cool website as you can see you've got a couple of choices there i don't know why there's two options and there's also one where you can get two i, I don't know why that is you click on shop now i will leave links in the description down below if you want to go and check it out you can see the only one available is two gigabyte of ram and eight gigabyte of internal storage pick the plug that you want now we can see it's 76 dollars 99 convert that into pounds and i think it works out around 55 pound so me personally what i think of this i think it's a cracking little device Granted, I've only used it for a few days, but I just really like it. If you compare it to the likes of the Chromecast, I think this is a better device. You've got your USB ports, micro SD card, you've got Ethernet, optical. There's a lot more freedom on this device without having to add different OTGs and things like that. Compare it to the Fire Stick 4K, and that's just down to personal preference, whether you prefer Google and Android TV or if you prefer Amazon. But there's not really that many negatives I've found with this device as of yet. But as it stands, definitely worth the money in my opinion. Right, I'm going now. For anybody wondering as well, it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. Any opinion is my own. I know there's a lot of people that are a bit skeptical, but just so you know, it's my opinion. Right, that video's lasted ages. I'm going. Right, so that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you soon. Tera. Right, so first of all, I want to thank Mequel for sending this to... Oh, and we almost... Fucking hell, I don't know what that were then. <laughs>